Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you all for uh, for coming coming by. On the way over, I was actually thinking about uh, there's a there's a great F essay by Frederick Hayek called "Why I'm Not a Conservative," and there's a part in that essay where, where he's expressing frustration, essentially, that the socialists had stolen his word, liberal, and he was frustrated with the inability for our side to explain who we are in a simple way. And he, 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 he goes on to um, express frustration with the word libertarian. He calls it a manufactured term. And he never answers the question. But I was thinking about that in the context of, of the radical left stealing our best words. They stole liberal. Mm -hmm. They've stolen community. Yeah. And they continue... At, Another one, justice. Mm -hmm. These are our words. These are our values. And I, w I was thinking about this uh, after having read for the second time, I'm a, I'm a geek this way, but I read Adam Smith's Theory of Moral Sentiments for a second time. Has anyone else done this? <laughs> um, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> Terry's embarrassed by this. But 700 pages later, I said, so what he's really saying is, don't hurt people and don't take their stuff. And if Adam Smith had set up a Twitter account, he could have said 700 pages in 44 characters. <laughs> and I think that's, that's our challenge today. I think our ideas are better. I think our intellectual basis for our arguments are better. But when we go to debate good ideas in the public square, we talk about really exciting things like downward sloping demand curves, or if you really want to dazzle people, you can talk about the non-aggression principle and use the acronym so that absolutely nobody knows what you're talking about, the NAP. Or you could talk about these basic common sense values that, that are the underpinnings of, of Western civilization, the beauty of, of the opportunity of liberty, the, the idea that we're going to treat everybody just like everybody else. We're not going to um, choose winners and losers. We're not going to judge you based on who your parents are, or the color of your skin, or who you know in, in the power of government. That's who we are. And when we talk about the rule of law, we're really talking about treating everybody just like everybody else. When they talk about social justice, they're really talking about giving someone that you will never meet, who has an extraordinary power, a faceless, gray-suited bureaucrat in some agency that you'll never meet, making a decision for you. And they have their own agendas. They know things that about you that you don't know about them. And it takes away that, that opportunity to do something that no one's ever done before. I think that's our challenge. We need to explain liberty and opportunity and work in the context that young people understand. Now, we were just talking about this a little bit earlier. I know this debate is going on right here in London, but with the internet, the world has changed so fundamentally. I think we have the biggest opportunity, certainly in my lifetime, and perhaps in the entire history of liberty, to communicate these values to millions and millions of eyeballs, right? We have four and a half million people on our Facebook page. Um, I think that's just scratching the surface of how many people particularly young people at the very long tail of the internet would be interested in liberty if we just connect with them. We're not going to do it with, with a 40-page white paper. We have to translate it into plain English. So that's why I wrote this book. I really wanted to explain liberty in a way that, that would, would likely offend any serious moral philosopher, certainly offend any serious scholar, but, uh, but I, I boiled it down to 44 letters. Don't hurt people, don't take their stuff, take responsibility, work for it, mind your own business, and fight the power. Now, I think all of the canons of all the liberty that we've ever talked about can be boiled down to that, but let me just talk about the last one for a minute. Fight the power. We're against a monopoly on power. Lord Acton said it correctly, right? Power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. If you're a young kid today driving a car and you, you want to provide services to another person and you're looking at the taxi monopoly that's never ever let you to do that, are you going to be with us or are you going to be with them? 
if you want to rent out a, 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 a bedroom in your house and you've, you've logged on to Lyft, suddenly you're a capitalist. You don't, you don't know that. You won't use the C word because that would be offensive. But that was funnier than I meant it to be. <laughs> but we've democratized capitalism. Think about it. Everybody, anywhere, has access to better information. They have access to the disintermediating forces of social media. So you can connect directly with customers. You can connect directly with other people that are thinking about the world and struggling with ideas the same way you are. Everything is undermining the middleman. Now, the middleman may be political parties. It may be any top-down institution. It may be the, the cat monopoly. Think about that world and think about our potential to connect with young people who are struggling with the, the, the frustration of top-down, one-size-fits-all big government. They don't have opportunities. They're looking at, at, at school debt that they can't possibly pay off. They're still living with their parents. And they're getting turned off by the insanely authoritarian political correctness coming from the other side. They're not sure what they're allowed to say anymore. They're not sure what they're allowed to think. I think that undercuts everything that the other side is trying to do. And because we have an ability to do that, we're not dependent on a political party to explain these ideas. Um, I'm more optimistic about the ideas of liberty and their ability to connect with people today than I have been in my entire life. But we have to translate it into common sense values. We have to go back to Adam Smith and understand what he's talking about when he, when he talks about the value of life, when he talks about you shouldn't be stealing from other people and the potential, that open-ended potential of doing things that no one's ever done before. That's our opportunity. We just have to fight the power. We have to be willing to step up and challenge authority when appropriate organize together, connect based on ideas, connect based on common purpose, um, connect through voluntary association. And if you think about this world, and you think about how the left has used social media, how the left has been better at community organizing than our side has ever been, I think that's about to change. Because we're talking about a world where, where freedom reigns, choice reigns, voluntary association reigns, people defining their own futures. That's what we can do with this. But we have to make sure that we allow that to happen, that we connect with young people. So how do we do this? I think it's quite simple. I think we, we translate our ideas into plain English. We, we talk to people that we don't think are with us, but they really are. And we try to figure out a way to replace this one-size-fits-all politics that Hayek was talking about in that article. You call yourself a conservative, you call yourself a liberal, you're really trying to use the levers of power of the state to tell other people how to live their lives. What we're struggling for is that alternative, based on freedom, based on opportunity. <clears throat> I think we need to figure that out and, and, and we can change the world in a way that you and I had never imagined was possible before. Thank you very much.